Good evening. I welcome you all to the exclusive Kidney Care Show, an initiative by Integrated Health and Wellbeing Council, powered by JP Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals. I'm Riddhi Lakra, Assistant Editor, IHW.TV. And in this live session, we will be discussing about diet and nutrition for adults with advanced chronic kidney diseases. Like other developing countries, India has unique situations and challenges that influence early diagnosis and management of chronic kidney diseases. According to the ongoing nationwide study, among people suffering from diabetes and blood pressure, at least 30% were detected with chronic kidney diseases. This rare condition shows any early symptoms and leads to a gradual kidney failure. It is noted that prevention and early detection is the key for managing most patients with chronic kidney diseases and helps further leading a better life with. Hence, the aim of this talk show is to impart expert guidance on diet and nutrition for adults with advanced chronic kidney diseases. Today, we have with us Dr. Ritesh Ka Agrawala. He, uh, Dr. Ritesh is an endocrinologist and a diabetologist at Shanti Pavan Multi Speciality Hospital, uh, Speciality Care, Bhuvneshwar. I welcome you, Doctor, for this kidney care talk show. Uh, doctor, when we, uh, doctor, when we talk about uh, kidney, uh, if you could explain the simple function, what does the kidney do? And uh, what are the effects of uh, like the chronic kidney diseases on our kidney? So, as you have said rightly, the most common cause of kidney problem in our country is diabetes and hypertension. And around 30 to 50% of our patients are suffering from both kidney disease and diabetes. If I will simply say what the role of kidney is, it is the uh, part of the body which clear all the waste material from our body. Like whatever we eat, it is uh, digested and the waste material which is produced out of the food material or by the metabolism of the body, it is excreted or filtered by the kidney. So it is the filter of our body which can filter all the waste and the detox material from our body through urine. If we have problem like the chronic kidney disease that is known as CKD, then this waste material are deposited in our body which is responsible for the different complications like accumulation of fluid or accumulation of the different phosphorus or potassium or raised blood pressure or the eye problem and all other problems associated with it. For that reason, may the patient need, if diagnosed early, we can able to avoid the problem arises due to CKD or if the patient are diagnosed later stage, we have dialysis or transplant as a second option. So this health talk, we will give more importance on the early diagnosis prevention and the dietary intervention so that a patient can lead a good and healthy lifestyle for a prolonged period of time. Uh, Dr. Ritesh, when we talk about, you were explaining us about the what are the problems with, uh, happens what, uh, when uh, with the CKD. So uh, what kind of a diseases can lead to uh, like a chronic kidney diseases? What are the early, some of the early symptoms that people would see? Yeah, so... I have told that the diabetes and hypertension are the most common cause of chronic kidney disease. Other causes are the uh, water content of the lead or some of the materials which is present in the local area. So we may have found that some of the pocket of the area in India where the CKD problems are more predominant. Like in Odisha where I am staying, a area of Angul and Dhankanal is there where the more waste product from the factory are draining to the river and on the bank of the river, the people are more suffering from the CKD. So might be some of the toxic material which is present in the soil or the water is also responsible for the development of chronic kidney disease. So if you see how a person can know he is going to develop CKD or kidney problem, like if any of the person have frothy urine, like frothness in the urine, if it is there, they may counsel to the doctor. If they have mild swelling at the leg, if they have nausea, vomiting, uncontrolled blood pressure, or family history, or in the locality where the patient are, where the person is staying, if the locality has high number of kidney problem in history, they should be checked for their uh, 
creatinine or consult to the doctor to look whether their kidney is functioning correctly or not. So to know high blood pressure, frothy urine, swelling of the feet, and nausea and vomiting are the most common presentation of our kidney problem. Uh, doctor, you also explain about like uh, like the other, I mean, uh, some of the factors like water is one of the issue. In We have a lifestyle of like with, uh, we have hypertension and diabetes. So uh, are there other factors also, say genetic factors also include in this that that can cause a chronic kidney disease? Yes, ma'am. Uh, some of the kidney disease are genetic, like the autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease are there. Some of the uh, focal segmental glomerulonephritis. Some of the kidney disease are associated with infection of the kidney where they are not recovered properly and they go to the uh, chronic kidney disease. But these are certain situations where if I count the number of patients are low, most common cause as we have discussed is the diabetes and hypertension. So we are more focusing on the prevention of kidney problem in diabetes patient and hypertension but 80% of the treatment is the control of the blood sugar and blood pressure, which gives a better kidney outcome in the long run. In diabetes, we say it as a diabetic kidney disease, not the chronic kidney disease. And mostly at the time of diagnosis of diabetes, we will check for the kidney. And then every six monthly, we should look for the kidney disease. Normally, kidney problems are mostly associated with the retinopathy also. That is the eye problem. So any of the person who have kidney problem, they have to look for their eye checkup also annually to find out there is any association between the kidney and eye problem. Blood pressure is also a contributing, major contributing factor for the uh, deterioration of the kidney function. So as early as possible, if we will control the blood pressure with uh, medication, low salt diet, we are able to control or prevent the progression of kidney disease. Uh, Dr. Ritesh, you spoke about the salt intake. So uh, we, I wanted to ask my next question is about that only. So what exactly is the relationship between our food and diabetes and how it is further leading to kidney problems? As we know, the diabetes is a lifestyle disease itself. So in diabetes, we need to control the blood sugar through the lifestyle modification that includes the proper diet and at least one hour of exercise, at least five days per week. So in this dietary management, we are more stringent if the patient has diabetes and kidney disease both. Because for the kidney disease, we have certain restrictions and for diabetes, we have certain restrictions. So when both are combined, it is very difficult for us and our dietitian to give a proper nutritious diet to our kidney patient. For diabetes, we need low fat, low calorie diet. But if the patient has kidney disease along with that, as I have said, it is a filter part of our body, it mostly filter the different electrolyte. One of these is the phosphorus and potassium. And sodium is the major contributing factor for the blood pressure. So if we will restrict the amount of sodium in our diet, not the zero sodium, but restricting the amount of sodium. So what we advise to our patient not to take the extra salt, Take the normal salt in their regular diet, but don't add extra salt like what we are taking in the salad or uh, pickles or in the papad or in the different way we are adding salt in our diet. So avoid extra taking of salt. 23 gram per day of salt is sufficient for us uh, uh, in uh, diabetes and CKD patient. And Overall diet control according to the work habit of the patient, if a patient is a uh, heavy worker, if the patient has moderate worker or the sedentary lifestyle, we will calculate the calorie. For the sedentary lifestyle patient, we give around 1500 kilocalorie diet. For moderately worker patient, we give around 1800 kilocalorie. And for heavy worker, we give around 2200 kilocalorie of diet so that it will maintain the energy expenditure of the body throughout the day. Uh, Dr. Ritesh, like uh, once a person already has a chronic kidney disease and he's undergoing maybe dialysis and maybe also in the process of a transplant. Uh, so uh, what is why in that time the nutrition is important for him and uh, what kind of things he should be taking care about? 
so most common problem with the ckd and dialysis patient is that we have to take care of the potassium and phosphorus because these are the mineral which is filtered by the kidney if it is if the kidney is not working we have a issue with high potassium which is responsible for the cardiac problem and high phosphorus which is also drag the calcium from the bone which is which is causing the brittle bone or the weak bone which is responsible for the uh, fracture or anything else so in this regards as the kidney is not working we are not able to do anything much but we will able to restrict the amount of potassium and phosphorus by our diet intake by decreasing the amount of potassium and phosphorus along with the salt in our diet and some form of restriction of the protein also because protein is the material which again in the body break down into the waste material that is the creatinine and this creatinine is responsible for all the uh, symptoms and sign of the ckd so we need to restrict not to make zero but we need to restrict the potassium intake phosphorus intake protein intake and salt intake along with the other uh food nutritious food depending on the individual patient comorbid condition associated with it so re high rich potassium food which should be avoided by a ckd patient are the citrus food like the tomato grapes pomegranate coconut water banana and like this high phosphorus food are also to be avoided like the high protein diet meat and chicken and the store rep, uh, refrigerated food also also to be avoided to prevent the risk of fracture and the cardiac problem arises due to this protein restriction should be around 0.8 g per body kg body weight should be the protein intake by a ckd patient which will maintain the normal energy requirement by the body uh doctor like uh, when we talk about smoking and alcohol so uh, is it advisable or maybe it is very restricted for any of the kind of a kidney patient uh, to continue with this and uh, over that like uh, he, over that he is also having a diabetes so in that case is it advisable or what is the thing condition like yeah so smoking it mostly the smoking which contain the nicotine and the inflammatory molecule in it it mostly target the blood vessels so as i have told we have hypertension which is a cause of ckd so if we will target the blood vessel then there is a restriction or the constriction of the blood vessel that leads to ckd and it is definitely detrimental and gives hazardous reaction to our patient if the patient has diabetes and ckd and if the patient will smoke that increase the risk of ckd definitely followed by it also increase the risk of peripheral artery disease where there is a risk of amputation or it also increase the risk of heart attack or the brain stroke because of the constriction of the blood vessel so smoking is much more detrimental to our patient who have diabetes hypertension and ckd compared to alcohol but yes again alcohol is also detrimental in some extent like if a person is taking alcohol it may cause fluctuation in the blood glucose level which is responsible for the hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia which is again detrimental alcohol are also having the calorie count so any of the patients we are mostly uh, avoiding smoking and alcohol for our patient who have diabetes hypertension and ckd so it is better not to take both this uh, uh, alcohol and smoking to prevent the progression of the disease Uh, Doctor Ritesh, if you could explain in a very simple term, what exactly is the relationship between the eat, intake of excessive salt or the processed food in uh, the case of a hypertension? And uh, we often say that your you would have a high blood pressure. So, what is exactly a relationship with the eating, taking excessive salt and the processed food, etc.? Yeah. So, processed food we are using preservative to preserve or to increase the lifespan of the food. so in hypertension and ckd we mostly advise to the patient to take the fresh fruit or the fresh food which are non preserved because in preservation whatever the chemical used and the more amount of salt used to prolong the life span of the food or the fruit so it is better always not to take the canned food or the preserved food or the preserved uh, uh, non vegetarian item 
So we most of our patient allow before taking this type of food, you have to wash the food properly so the sodium content will be released or it is better to take the fresh food. This sodium chloride which is there, it increase the blood pressure by increase the concentration of the blood and also it causes the vasoconstriction which is also responsible for the increase in blood pressure. So low sodium foods are also or the low sodium, low salt diet are also available. If we are taking a packed food, always look for the nutritious value which is written in the packed food. If any of the food which has sodium concentration of less than 20%, it is advisable to consume. If the sodium concentration is more than 20% in the packed or the uh, preserved food, it is better to avoid that type of food to prevent or to control the blood pressure and to pre prevent the progression of CKD. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ritesh, for explaining that. Uh, also, coming to my next important question, uh, when we talk about the fluid intake, any form of fluids what we uh, consume, so uh, somebody with a CKD and with an advanced CKD, so what are the important uh, measures they should keep in mind uh, while consuming any kind of a fluid? Uh, you earlier spoke about the coconut water also. So yeah. is it advisable or not? So in CKD, as I have said, coconut water is the richest source of potassium. So it is better to avoid to decrease the level of potassium. Overall, water intake is also we will restrict for our patient because as I have said, it is the filter of our body. So if it will not able to filter the water content of our body, water are also getting accumulated in our body, which is responsible for the uh, leg swelling or the uh, breathless problem or the heart failure also. So mostly we will calculate the total fluid intake, either it is in the form of water or food or any liquid item. So total uh, daily fluid intake of a person in CKD is the amount of fluid output that is in the form of urine minus 500. So let's if any person is urinating one liter per day. So the total amount of fluid intake we are allowing is the 500 ml. That is one liter minus 500 ml. But in summer, the amount of fluid loss is not only through the urine, but also through the respiratory system and by the sweating of the skin. So during summer or in those who are working outside the home, we will give a little bit of extra fluid to them. That is the amount of urine excreted in the urine minus 200 or 300. Like those who are working outside and in summer season, if any of the person is excreting one liter of urine, we keep 700 to 8 liter, 100 ml of uh, total fluid intake, either it is in the form of water, in the form of diet, or in the form of anything. So total daily intake should be around 700 to 800 ml. In winter, it is amount of urine output minus 500 is the total amount of fluid intake we are allowing to our patient. This is the rough calculation, but if any of the person who need dialysis, or renal transplant or at the end stage of kidney disease by seeing the fluid volume status of the patient and the heart condition, we will analyze the amount of fluid required. But this is the general formula how we can say to our uh, people to know what is the amount of fluid they need during the CKD. Uh, uh, Dr. Ritesh, we often hear that uh, a lot of people who have a kidney problem, uh, gradually they'll have other functions problem as well, say heart problem or their liver will stop functioning. So what exactly happens in this? And uh, are these, uh, our food intake is a very important thing. And uh, can our food intake reverse kidney, uh, like uh, the chronic kidney disease in any form? Or it can yeah. be only controlled? Yeah. So food intake will not reverse the uh, kidney problem. Kidney problem is there by food restriction or by giving the nutritious food, we are giving less pressure to our filter so that it will able to filter the lesser waste material which is present in our body. So we are not generating more waste material so that it will give pressure to our kidney, but it will not associated with any pathological disorder or it will not reverse the kidney problem by just restricting the diet. It also affects the other organ, as I have said, if there is increase in phosphorus, it will drag calcium from the bone. So there is brittle bone and increased risk of fracture. 
if the potassium is high because of the kidney if it will not filter it will attack the heart and there may be a risk of sudden heart attack or the blockage of the heart or complete heart block if there is fluid overload that means if the kidney is not able to filter the fluid or the water from the body the fluid will accumulate inside the body and it will cause heart failure pedal edema and the abdominal swelling which leads to the difficulty in breathing and also required urgent dialysis or the transplantation for our patient so kidney disease is a condition where it affects not only the kidney but also all part of our body along with the eyes and bone heart and other part of the body and it should be protected by giving the proper diet and nutrition with proper control of blood glucose and blood pressure and proper advice of the doctor Uh, Dr. Adesh, when we talk uh, about the doctor's advice, so uh, how can uh, like uh, like we understand about like should we keep a proper uh, record of our lab reports or uh, like uh, is it a like a uh, like once somebody is having a CKD, advanced CKD, so what are the things they should keep doing? They should keep doing a blood report test. Uh, what is exactly the process in their cases? Yeah, so kidney is an organ which also help in the. hemoglobin production by secreting a hormone erythropoietin so those group of patient who have kidney problem they have low hemoglobin so they have to check the hemoglobin level every 3 monthly they need to check the serum urea and creatinine level every 3 monthly if they have stage 1 or stage 2 kidney problem they need to check the sodium and potassium level calcium and phosphorus level as i have said and they need to look for the blood glucose level if they have diabetes along with that various methods are available in the different laboratory to measure the serum creatinine that serum creatinine is directly or indirectly gives us the idea about the kidney status by seeing the serum creatinine we will calculate the egfr that is the glomerular filtration rate that means how much able the kidney has the capacity to filter the kidney so by measuring the serum creatinine we will measure the egfr normally egfr should be 120 if it is 95 60 to 95 we say it is stage 1 45 to 60 it's stage 2 30 to 45 stage 3 15 to 30 egfr is stage 4 and below 15 or the end stage kidney disease is the stage 5 ckd by receiving the blood report uh, we will say which stage of ckd is there and we will advise the patient to do the routine investigation according to the cause of the ckd and the stage of the ckd so at least 3 monthly they need to visit the doctor to find out any other problem they have associated with ckd uh doctor also just uh, was wanted to know uh, so somebody with a advanced uh, like a chronic kidney disease so are they uh, i mean sure that they are going under a, a dialysis process or uh, like is a optional thing like with the food and nutrition it can be controlled and they do not need a dialysis now if any of the patient who are in the stage 4 or 5 ckd and if the cause is not known or when the patient gradually progress for the last one year or two year then the certain condition are there where if the potassium is high fluid overload is there patient is dyspneic urine output is nil then definitely dialysis is the only option as per the requirement we can advise once weekly or twice weekly dialysis or by seeing the patient condition and if dialysis is the Uh, ultimate requirement of the patient we will advise for the renal transplantation by getting the uh, proper donor and by matching that so at the end if we will say our kidney has fail or we have ckd end stage definitely dialysis is the only way by giving the proper diet nutrition and a healthy uh, lifestyle we are just prolonging the disease progress so if we need dialysis now by giving proper diet exercise and nutrition we may prolong it to after a year or two year or three year we are not reversing but definitely we are decreasing pressure on the kidney so that we will delay the process of dialysis or transplantation but if any of the disease process which will progress and end as a end stage kidney disease 
or if any of the patient develops symptoms because of the kidney problem, they may need dialysis or they may consult their uh, doctor to get out rid of it by diet, nutrition or medication. Uh, Dr. Ritesh, generally for how many years a patient can undergo a dialysis uh, and with a proper food and nutrition? So like, how is it interconnected and uh, can a person live longer or with the food and nutrition properly done? Yeah, mostly it depends on the cause. What is the cause of CKD? If it is diabetes, we can properly manage for a prolonged period of time, 15 years, 20 years with diet and exercise along with the anti-diabetic medication. If it is hypertension, if we will control hypertension, the patient may not progress to CKD. If it is genetic, we have nothing more to do but to, but by diet and exercise and with proper uh, interval of six monthly yearly monitoring, we will definitely prolong. But in genetic causes, we are not able to say at what stage the patient will develop the severe disease. But yes, we will definitely prolong the disease process so that the patient will get a better and a prolonged uh, normal healthy life. So definitely diet, exercise and nutrition play a great role in the management of CKD along with diabetes and hypertension. So it has to be focused uh, before taking any medicine and the doctor advice. Uh, doctor, coming to my very last question uh, about uh, like understanding what is the right portion uh, for a patient with CKD and also to understand uh, what exactly is a medical nutrition therapy and how it can help a person with a CKD. Yeah, so medical nutrition therapy is a term now uh, uh, a lot of medical nutrition therapy are available on the medicine store and the off level at the OPD clinic. But medical nutrition therapy is a complex term which we can use in the hospitalized patient and also for the OPD patient. So for a CKD patient, if we see medical nutrition therapy, it includes low protein, low salt, low phosphate, low potassium diet, where mostly comes the, and also the low uh, saturated and the uh, trans fat we need more polyunsaturated or the um, uh, monounsaturated fat in our diet, which includes safflower oil or corn oil or rice bran oil uh, like this. And this medical nutrition therapy, low protein, low potassium, low phosphorus, low fat diet, low salt diet is the medical nutrition therapy we will plan out for our patient, which is better for their kidney disease. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ritesh, for uh, talking to us today. And uh, also just a last question, uh, like, have you come across any patient uh, who have, uh, like, who are living with a, in a very good healthy condition, maybe with a dialysis and a chronic uh, kidney disease uh, with a good uh, healthy diet and nutrition? So is there a, have you seen such cases? Is it a possible way? Yeah, yeah. In my personal experience, a lot of patients are there who were, who are only with the diet exercise and, and mostly 80% of our patients are diabetes and hypertension. So with the good control of blood sugar and hypertension, along with the diet and exercise, I have seen a lot of patients who are still avoiding dialysis for last 10 to 15 years. So it is better to follow the prescribed medical nutrition therapy as per the guidelines and follow the doctors with proper three monthly or six monthly health checkup as advised by your doctor is the key to prevent or the prolong the kidney disease. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ritesh, for uh, joining us today and uh, talking to us uh, about like a very important topic, how uh, diet and nutrition can play uh, in a, uh, terms of a chronic kidney disease. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, on behalf of IHW Council, Dr. Ritesh, I would like to thank you. And I, I would also like to thank uh, JB Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals uh, for supporting this initiative and uh, uh, creating an awareness about the kidney diseases. Uh, we hope such initiatives will help more people and uh, understand about the kidney problems and they will start living a healthy life. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you, doctor. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.